Hello, survivors. Uh, I am your host, Jeffrey Card, and welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. Uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these. We've started slowing down our cadence, and I've forgotten how to do everything. Uh, so, you know, you might get a few audio glitches from me. You might uh, hear me say my intro in a completely different way from usual. But uh, it's really lovely to see you again. Uh, we're happy to be back. And uh, the reason we're back is because there is a new update out for State of Decay 2. It's one of our smaller ones, but it's got some really great, long-asked-for quality-of-life updates that we are are excited to show to you all. Uh, by we, of course, to start, I mean me and Joe Swarner, uh, your other uh, intrepid host. Joe, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm just sitting here enjoying life on a couch playing State of Decay. Yeah, so he is actually playing the game right now, so whenever you see gameplay, that is going to be Joe playing the game. Uh, but Joe and I contributed very little, if anything at all, to Update 36, and so we are not really the ones that you want to talk to. Who you want to talk to is our friends from Wushu Studios. This is Steve and Ian. Hey, you two. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Nice to be here. Let's get started by meeting Steve. So, Steve Obewi, uh, oh tell us about yourself. <laughs> tell us what you do. Uh, well, hello, my name is Stephen O'Berry. You can call me Steve. I'm a technical games designer for Wisher Studios, and uh, yeah, I'm one of the people responsible for a lot of the Cobalt stuff. So uh, if you have any Cobalt questions, I'm your guy. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, Ian, next to him, uh, what, can you tell us a little bit about what you do on the team? Hello, yeah, so uh, I'm Ian. I'm also a technical designer at Wisher. Um, I've been on Snowball since the beginning of Curveball, so. Um, I've since moved off of Careful specifically onto something we'll get into a bit later. Um, but yeah, um, anything else Careful related as well, I can I can try and help answer uh, where possible. So uh, yeah, so send us your curveball related questions and uh, or just you know anything to do with Wushu's recent work, and we will try to funnel as many questions as we can to these folks. But we're going to start out by jumping into gameplay. And uh, Joe is here uh, to show us a few of the new uh, improvements that are in Update 36. So where do we want to start, Joe? Uh, I've got bloaters right here. Oh, okay. So uh, actually, uh, Ian and Steve, you want to tell us a little bit about what has changed with bloaters in Update 36? Do you want to take us? I take it. Yeah, who, uh, I don't know I, which Yeah, so I mean... Uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, there's been a few bloater improvements. Um, like I think we uh, did like some adjustments of the VFX um, and the damage of the gas bursts are a bit. They're better and like closer matched to each other. Um, I think previously they were kind of a little out of sync. Um, you know, in terms of like the spatial, um, the physical space around them, um, what you'd expect. You know, when you get damaged and walk into a gas cloud, I think. Um, it could start a little earlier than you'd like uh, expect. So yeah, um, so yeah, we 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 put some work in around matching that closer to the expectation and things like that. So basically, there were cases where a player would be walking around the edge of the cloud and they would feel like I'm standing in a safe place, but actually they would be just inside the bubble where you do get damaged, you do get affected by uh, the cloud. You can see here. Joe is skirting the edge, and he's in a place where you would kind of expect previously to get infected, to get hurt by that gas cloud. But now it's not having an effect, because you have to really be in that cloud in order for it to hurt you. Is that basically what's going on? Yeah, so you, yeah, you need to be uh, more, obviously, in, inside it, you know, with the intent of being poisoned, essentially, um, or infected. Um, yeah, and then like also around that, like just to kind of compensate for that, um, you now need to get a little bit closer, just you know, before it kind of triggers that explosion. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's just a bit more fairer in terms of, and you know, better matches the expectation I think for the uh, players. Yeah, when it comes to things like this, where it's like the, the visual is the visual is very muddy. I think it's usually a, a, a good rule of thumb to err on the side of favoring the player if the player believes honestly in their heart that they did not touch the cloud us hitting them with the damage always feels unfair to be very frustrating right so yeah uh well done improving on our uh <laughs> on our version of this um it looks yeah that actually does look a lot fairer that like i'm used to just the idea of bloaters it's always feeling like a little cheap and uh, that actually looks pretty darn fair so uh it's a nice work over there. yeah I, was, I think I think like a few of the things that we worked on around this, like we kind of identified as like, oh, you know what? This would be like a really quick thing that we can just resolve that would get a lot of, uh, you know, traction um, and like value from. So, yeah, there's like there's a few things like that I think uh, in the update. So I've got a question for for you both. 
or whoever commands it. Does that does that improvement for the bloater cloud does that transfer over to like the juggernaut slam, like the area of effect of that, or the screamer spit? Don't know for sure. Do you know, Steve? I'm honestly not too sure myself. Okay. But I think it might do, to be honest. Okay. Since they share the same script, I believe. Yeah, they should be very similar, if not exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, because I mean, I know that the other two, they don't they don't infect cars the way that a bloater cloud does. And so the, yeah, the, true. They're, they're, clearly they're different in some ways, but I'm not sure I'm not sure which ways and which ways they're not. Yeah, that's, a, that's another thing as well. Like, if anyone... Um... If anyone from our team is listening and watching, feel free to send us a DM and let us know if you know. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you a that. curveball question. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Like, you did uh, I said what you did. Uh, that has, throw us a curveball. Yeah, that's a, that has <laughs> that means two things. Uh, <laughs> all right. So next thing we got to go out and do is, so there have been some improvements to looting. Uh, so if I go to these empty play cards that I don't like emptying out, or these dead play cards that I don't like emptying out, is that one of those containers that would do this thing? Or do I need to specifically go to like a, a looting thing, looting place? Steve, do you know if, uh, I, so I believe it's all containers. Yeah, I believe uh, it's I all containers. Kind of just, uh, to I, stay. I also know it also um, affects uh, play cards as well. So you can go to a dead play card and just click loot all and it still loots everything. Yeah. Oh, so my. that you should yeah. be a very happy camper. So yeah, if you need to like take stuff and leave, you can easily do that now, which you is know, always I, handy. I had not been thinking of that benefit of it. That yeah, a lot of the time, like one of the one of the reasons why you know you would leave a bunch of play cards just you know just sort of unlooted is because each time you defeat a play card, if you're playing in the lethal zone, the next thing you need to do is get the crap out. Yeah. Of there. And you don't have time to Because we don't loot. kill the zombies. But now, with one of the improvements, yeah. it's a little quicker. Mm -hmm. Very well played. Yeah, the amount of times, like, I kind of, like, just panic trying to get everything and just bail out of there. But it's just, yeah, it's so much easier. Just one press button. I see you mean you've got the space, I guess. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you have to you hold down the buttons space, first. You, guys, you guys added something that I really, really appreciate. Okay, so let's have a look. Yeah, if you do a take all. So, I can do hold a take all right here, but I don't yes. have enough space. But you know what I don't have to do? I can just drop it on the ground. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh Even better. I, honestly, it used to kill me, you know, when you didn't, like, you wanted that physically gun in the world, but you just couldn't loot the, like, the last bottle of painkillers right there, and it's just yeah. lurking in the world. Yeah. Yeah. It used to upset me. It upset me so much. Yeah. And it's just one of those little things that, like, you know, after, you know, a couple hundred hours or however many hours you may have put in. <clears throat> I won't say exactly how many for me. Um, <laughs> you know, like, it's just one of those things that eventually just starts to wear on you, you know. And uh, you guys solved it. Thank you. So to summarize, yeah, you, you kind of just get used to that. No, sorry. Yeah, I was just going with Joe. Yeah. Our, our, our signal is crossing the Atlantic uh, and the entire United States. And so, uh, you know, we, we, it's easy for us to start talking at the same time as each other. But uh, I was just going to say to summarize, so if, you, if it went by fairly quickly, uh, Joe was able to get in there, take multiple things at the same time out of that play cart by just hit, by holding the take all button, which was great. But then one thing was left because he didn't have enough room in his inventory. And so he had another uh, new advantage, which he could hit the drop button. And so he emptied the thing from the container directly onto the ground. And then the play cart was able to dissolve, uh, which, yeah, like that, that like... It's weird, like, I don't even want the stuff in the play guard a lot of the time. I just want his dead body gone. I want to have felt the, the, the final, you know, victory, and I can't until I get enough inventory space. And now I can just make a pile of crap on the ground and make the original pile of crap go away, which is great. The little things. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it counts a lot. So, okay, so we've gone over uh, the bloater improvements, taking all, dropping items. Oh, it's, oh we should go uh, to one of your outposts with that rucksack at some point, Joe. Uh, and oh, get so one probably, right now. Probably the biggest new change to the UI. Um, yeah, we got an expanded menu that lets you do, do some new stuff. I think I think this is my favorite change in this. <laughs> it's just it's one of those things like I, I always felt like like compelled as a player, you know, when you've got a rucksack and you're already in the middle of a journey and you just loot one. Oh. I'm like, I should take this back because I know I'm gonna run into more, something and I'm gonna is, want it. Something is terribly wrong. 
Yeah, and this has actually been one of the longest standing requests from players uh, because it was kind of a controversial decision that that, uh, that the original team made early on, uh, which was to basically say that you have to go home in order to deposit a rucksack. And and the motivation was just there, there was some some worry that players uh, that if players didn't have something requiring them to go home, they would literally never go home, and they wouldn't be able to sort of feel the impact of their a lot of the choices. Like you know, you can build your facilities from far away using the menu, and and you would build all this stuff and. It, you know, enhance your base, but you would never really get to enjoy it, or that just enjoy that sense of like, look at all these people that I'm that I'm saving, and so uh, so yeah, there was a thought that it would feel good to you know ultimately to give the player reasons to come home, and that was a very kind of a ham-fisted solution, but it worked. Players did definitely go home. Um, but no, I think it's, it's, it's interesting to, to, to kind of go in there and say, okay, we made that assumption early on, but were we even right? Do players need that? Is the game more fun uh, if you have to go home with rucksacks and then, you know, enjoy your base? Or is the trade-off not great? Well, so now we're kind of doing a live experience, so audience, let us know. <laughs> like, Bad news, Bears, I think I hit the book. Uh, yo, I just realized, yeah, so there is a known issue right now where if you drop something from the play cart, um, no. you can lock up the looting system right now. Is, no. is that the whole thing? I think that, yeah. I think that is the I believe it's only four play cards and maybe So the thing that I was most one. excited about is the thing that caused this to happen. All right, we'll see if we'll see if no. leaving my community and going back in. So, so what, what was the problem you were running into there, Joe? I couldn't quite tell. I couldn't loot anything. Oh, like you could open loot containers, but you couldn't get anything out of them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that does seem like something that... Um, Hard to show off. Fix, Hard imagine. to show off the looting if I can't loot anything. Sorry. I did not know about the no 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 I I literally just discovered that as well myself and then there we go that fixed it scene, you yeah so you yeah. don't have to relaunch the game you just have to go back to the main menu which is an annoyance however not yeah I think we're we're aware of that at least yeah I'm not a game killer yet okay cool All well right. actually it's kind of nice to run into stuff like that on the stream you know the audience can see that we're that we've seen it and, and you know that we can we can acknowledge it and. Uh, you know, this is always this kind of thing is always a work in progress, and it's hard to get everything exactly right, and and to realize everything you need to test. It's like, oh yeah, the drop feature feature works. That's just fine, and then not realizing <laughs> there's like another thing you have to go and do to find the bug that's gonna happen. You know? Yeah, there's always layers yeah. of context around to recreating it. Yeah. So. But it's oh, only from a play card, huh? Yeah, it only works on play cards for some weird reason. Okay. Containers are seem to be fine. So yeah, maybe there's so something about maybe maybe it's something about like destroying the container. I don't know. I I, I think it's I I am um, I could be wrong, but I actually I think it, I believe that it's dropping an item from any kind of container or not any container, but um, at least a trunk and maybe a supply drop. Oh. Um, yeah, I think it's quite selective over the container types right now that it will affect. But uh, yeah, it's it's quickly resolvable. Oh um, no, this is the wrong four. kind of outpost. I'm so sorry. Oh, so this, oh right. You it's a level two. Because this is a, <laughs> this is a, this is a, oh, it, I use, I use, it's a safe house. Okay, so Joe was attempting can't to those. deposit a rucksack at an outpost, but it has to be a leveled up outpost, which means it has to be like a resource outpost, one of the outposts that can be leveled up. Or your um, landmark outposts. Or your landmark outposts. Okay, yeah, so, but a regular old uh, beds outpost was not going to do it, so. Yeah, okay. I, I I love this change so much, honestly. Like yeah, the really amount good. of times I would I would just feel pressure to go back because I don't want to miss out on loot, but just having them extra safe houses around now that you can just quickly nip over to and deposit things in, it just adds so much more for me personally. So I was getting some complaints about my audio. I have tried to raise it. I hope that I can be heard a little bit better. I'm also speaking a little bit louder. I've been paranoid about the echo effect, and so I've been I kind of reduced my volume and stuff, but. Uh, Hopefully the echoes are a little bit better than the quietness. Uh, we're st we're still figuring out this room. There's a lot of uh, you know, this room. The room that we're the studio that we're using here is kind of half finished, and so there's certain things that are difficult to get right. So apologies if uh, if the audio has been a little bit weird. Um, I will do my best to find ways to improve this. Luckily we've got more time between streams these days, and we've got some time to fi fix technical issues in between. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, but if this is an annoying stream to listen to, I apologize. It's it's, it's my fault for not getting this place uh, fully up and running yet. Um, okay, so we do have a... Uh, I mean, Jeffrey, <laughs> it's not like you're working on anything else other than this room, right? Uh, yeah, I know. It's not like I <laughs> got another very stressful Good job. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so so I there's a, there's a question here. We, we've gotten this question before, but I really want to share it because it feels like it, it this feels like it comes from one of your countrymen. Uh, this is Ariadne in it. Uh, who says, can you make night less dark and the torch a bit brighter? Uh, it's really hard to see things at night and enjoy the nighttime gameplay. Um, so obviously, not going to try to like say, hey, Wushu, what are you going to do about problems we created? Um, but uh, but I, I, <laughs> we, we don't necessarily, I mean, I, I'm not going to put that on Wushu just to, to, to answer that. Just like that, that's a good point that our night is, is very dark. Uh, yeah, and I, and I don't know if you all have any particular plans on that. And if you, even if you did, you probably couldn't tell us about them. Um, but but uh, we have multiple times tried to make improvements. Uh, there there's some maps that have ha that have had a very sort of a uh, a big improvement to to how bright the night is. Um, I think Meager Valley is probably the one that is the least improved. Uh, and so if you want to have a brighter night, don't go to Meager Valley. That is an incredibly dark place. Uh, but there, a few of the other maps are, are a little brighter than they used to be. And I'm hoping that, that, that at least it is a little bit of an improvement. But just, just as a plug for my favorite map, Drucker County has a nice, big, full moon at night. <laughs> is... Honestly, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful moon. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, so there you go. Ariadne, we totally recognize that that is an issue. And uh, honestly, like, that feedback is also something that we're taking into the future of the franchise. You know, we, you know, we're working on other stuff right now, and uh, we're very aware of the fact that, you know, this is one of the biggest complaints from the audience um, about, uh, about the way that our, our, our maps work was that just the nights are incredibly dark. And it was an intentional creative choice to make night as dark as possible, but it's one that we are capable of rethinking. So uh, stay tuned. We'll see, we'll see how things go in the future. Yeah, I was I was gonna say like really quick. I mean like you know we do have people at Wushu as well who are like we, we're, um, we're very closely monitoring and like listening to things like this. And you know it, it's one of those things that does come up and we we create suggestions and talks about um, that. You know we we're aware of it at least anyway. And yeah, yeah. And, and while and while Jeffrey and stuff. I aren't necessarily like directly attached all the time to State of the K2 anymore. There are still people here in Seattle who meet with you folks over at Wushu on a regular basis. Uh, you know, the wonders of teleconferencing and all of that fun stuff. Uh, and so, you know, whenever you... Whenever... Com uh, when I say you, I mean y'all out there, players, you yeah. submit stuff. We You submit stuff to us still. Uh, and, that, and that still gets fed over there. So, like, when... When Rohan or any of our other customer advocate uh, folks get get reports or they see things on the wish list, that gets reported to Wushu straight away. And so, um, you know, we're still we still have a direct line, even though Jeffrey and I have both kind of moved on to other stuff. Yeah, and that's the, like one of the reasons why I suddenly started hesitating about asking you that question because was because. I don't know what you're working on, and so therefore I didn't know if I was just dropping some curveball in your lap, or if I was asking something that was perfectly appropriate. So Ian, thank you for jumping in and like uh, uh, giving us the angle on it. Actually, one thing I noticed in our Slack thread, uh, John Hollingworth uh, just popped in and he pointed out that uh, they not not only are you guys aware of the looting bug, uh, you, you've actually got a fix for it. The question is just when you're, when you're going to be able to deliver it. So yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, sorry. I didn't even want to like give anything away there just in case. I was like, hey, yeah, you know, yeah, no, we John, know. Well, John said that to us. So I assumed it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, there you but, go. But no, no particular promises on when a fix could land because yeah, there's a lot of factors that go into you know, what, when updates can happen. So. All right. So okay. What? Oh, so one thing we should talk about is the black part. Well, um, well, Joe is here dealing with some deadly threats. Uh, we should talk about one of the deadliest threats in the game, which is the Black Heart itself. Uh, there was a bunch of changes that went into it uh, in Update 26, and I've never even gotten a Black Heart in any of my games, and so I think I got one once, but I was too scared and I ran away, and then I think it's, I don't know. Uh, so I'm not an expert, but Steve, I believe that uh, you could probably walk us through what, like, what was going on with Black Heart before, why did you make changes, and what kinds of changes did you make? Um, well, black hearts were well. We got a lot of feedbacks that were saying that black hearts were a bit too dominating, especially when you start like your your playthrough, and the very first combo you get could be a black heart, and it kind of felt a bit too dominating sometimes. And some of the players kind of felt like, okay, it's kind of ruining their play styles. So we decided to tweak some parts of it, 
So now, you know, let's see, yeah, instead of it now waiting for two days before it starts, it now has a six days before you can actually get a block out. So that guy, it kind of gives the players more time to kind of prepare and get used to it. And then we also just nerfed some of the effects down and some of the damage that it does, because some of it kind of felt too punishing for players. And we didn't really want to punish the players. We kind of wanted the players to like take a challenge at it and go ahead and defeat this black out by themselves. But um, we decided to nerf it. But I also know that I got some feedback saying that we should have left it for lethal mode at the very least. But I will say I have some more comments for that later on. So uh, stay tuned, I guess. But yeah, the you know, original decision for that was just to tune it down a little bit for the default values for the next stage of implementations that we're going to be given. So uh, Urias Alpha in the chat asked, uh, says, I am loving the black hearts. Can we have them infect other hearts and turn them black too? Or wake <laughs> them up? I do love a little extra chaos in the apocalypse, which sounds like that's coming in from the sort of like lethal zone player, just desperate for something to make the game harder uh, kind of direction. What, what do you think about that kind of thing? I mean... That is a lot of things that we have actually discussed because we will have like our meetings that we just talk about various things that we can do and um, if this is like an approach we could take um, well I can't exactly say our final our final thoughts because yeah that's going to be later on yeah exactly but uh, yeah <laughs> I never say we have a lot of solutions and we're trying to think about what is the best approach we can actually take with this stuff. That makes sense. Yeah, and I don't want—I definitely don't want to railroad you into trying to say, answer questions you can't answer. Um, but you know, there's a lot of enthusiasm for the Black Heart in in the chat, though. Uh, Crush and stuff. Banana was like, "Can we have a mode where all the Plague Hearts are Black Hearts?" Um, and I think Good Lord, why? Uh, might have been more too. No, 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 no. The question is, why not? <laughs> exactly. Just saying. All right, fine, fine. <laughs> Um, so let, just going down the list here. Uh, oh, so one of the items on the on the list is better completion counter on curveballs with objectives, like under the weather, missing a few bolts. It'll now read zero out of three deposits instead of zero out of one three times. Okay, so so is this just a restructuring of how the objectives are expressed? Uh, yes, because previously it was saying zero out of one three times. Like each time you do um, put in a, a rock sack in, it will say zero out of one again and again and again. And uh, it kind of felt it was very misleading. So this time we just kind of corrected it to just say zero out of three, just so our players are more aware that yes, they need to deposit three rock sacks rather than one. So yeah, that was just a nice fix to it. So, so it was a series of zero out of one objectives. I don't think I've got yeah. that, that particular curveball. So, so you think you only have to do one thing and you actually have to do three things. And I could, yeah, I could totally, that, that is a big improvement. That's cool. Yeah, that, that was one of them things that we kind of locked ourselves into early on, like, and realized, you know, oh, we need to make considerations around this. But um, yeah, we got locked into a certain way of setting this up. But now that's been resolved. Like, fine. Yeah, it's really nice to have that resolved. Hey, uh, Joe, how close are you to one of your uh, upgraded outposts so that uh, we can do the rucksack thing? Oh, I've been doing the rucksack thing. Did I just not notice because we were having other conversations? Yeah. Oh, you got to interrupt me, man. i got to call attention to it. Do you have any rucksacks left? Um, now you I'm about to, to go rucksack. get another one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we, next time, what, I, yeah, what I'm doing, what I'm doing right now in terms of gameplay is kind of showing off like how you can clear out an entire neighborhood as long as you have an upgraded outpost in it without having to ever return home. Oh, gotcha. So you're just basically trying to vacuum up everything you can find in the area? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, oh, one other thing on the on the patch notes while you're doing that that I can bring up is uh, the, there's a couple little changes that I got to sneak in. Uh, even though I'm not officially on the project, occasionally Wushu tolerates me uh, checking something in. So uh, I checked in a few names uh, from you know, people, like fans of the game, people who, who like uh, get on my personal channel and ask to put their name in the game. Um, I, I, a bunch of those got included in Update 36, a couple that have been stored up for, for a while. So uh, if I have promised you that your name was in the game, Update 36 is probably where it landed, So uh, if, if I did it fairly recently, so there you go. Um, also, uh, you remember a while back, I think it was sometime last year, uh, we did a live stream here. I didn't even met earlier. <laughs> Man, time is weird. Um, a long time ago, uh, I did a live stream where I created uh, and edited traits on the air. Um, and one of the big changes that I made during that episode was taking the Blood Plague Survivor trait, which is one of the most common traits because it makes people effectively immune uh, to the Blood Plague, um, 
I took that trait, and originally it only could be given to characters of two particular leader types. Uh, and so I just basically extended it so that it could go to all four leader types. And then the way that I made some of my edits and checked them in, I actually broke some stuff, and I had to back my changes out uh, so I didn't break all of, all of Wushu's uh, things. And so it took a while for me to actually come back in and then remake those changes. But now I have, and now that has gone into update 36. So you should, when you're rolling random survivors, you should see Blood Plague Survivor show up about twice as often. Uh, it's already extremely rare, and so twice as often is still extremely rare. I don't expect you to suddenly, you know, find it all the time. But it is twice as, it, roughly twice as common now as it was before. So enjoy. And... Aside from the rucksack. Out of curiosity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. I was, I was going to ask Jeff. Um, out of curiosity, how is it that you decide on the names that are going into the game from funds? Oh, well, Or is it just a random pick? Or It's not a random pick. Well, so it's, I mean, I was trying to, uh, I, 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 I always feel weird when I'm hyping my personal Twitch channel on this channel. But basically, <laughs> I, I've got it set up on my personal Twitch where um, if you watch a lot of my shows and you uh, build up channel points, th I, there's some number of tens of thousands of points you can s submit to get your name added to State of Decay 2. Oh, nice. <laughs> because I, cause I, I periodically, just regardless of whether any fans have submitted uh, names, regardless... I just, um, I go in all the time and I just still, I'll just add like a pile of nicknames because I feel like it just because it's an easy yeah. thing to do in the game and it just adds a little bit for, for people who've been playing this game for like, you know, five years. They've seen all of the names after a while. And so I like throwing in some stuff that will occasionally surprise yeah. even the players who've been playing the game for a really long time. So, or, or um, yeah. you know, if you just wanted to be friends with Cogs, he'll pay for it. Oh, yeah, he watches that's true. Every <laughs> Cogs242, who's in our chat right now, he's got so many channel points on my channel that sometimes people will just show up and, like, mention that they would like to get their name in the game, and Cogs will just cash in. <laughs> we'll just cash in a bunch of channel points and get it for them. So uh, I don't want to suddenly put a bunch of obligations on, on Cogs, but uh, <laughs> there you go. His DMs are going wild. Yeah, exactly. literally. <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, but anyway, yeah. So, so 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 since I'm adding names to the game anyway, I figure why not take requests? And so yeah, so so that's kind of how that works. So I mean, if you really want to look at my personal channel, I usually have a link in the doobly doo of the uh, of the YouTube videos when these come out. So you can go there if you want to, but also I feel weird about doing that so i'm gonna stop talking about it now <laughs> it's all good <laughs> this is not a this is not an avenue of self-promotion for me this is an avenue of promotion of our beautiful lovely game and our colleagues over at wushu studios so. yeah this is this is uh this is about state of decay 2 but we do play a lot of that okay so you a lot have, of that you have got a rucksack now so let us know when you're about to get to an outpost so we can show off the awesomeness i've done it twice I, you've got, I need to stop. I need to stop. Okay, just like, like okay. We just, I'm just gonna I'm a, stare at you. We're just, until we're just, we're again. just like, walking back to the thing now. <laughs> walking um, back to the thing. <laughs> See, really, like, got, I just get, I get actually, we've done it one, two, three times now, and this neighborhood was already almost completely empty. So, this is the last one. Okay, cool. Well, the perfect timing then. Uh, so we, we, and also we, the big, beautiful moon in Drucker. Look at this. Look at this. That oh, is hell so good. It is so still good. real dark. Uh, <laughs> what the, I've actually started. Well, this is the beginning of night, Jeffrey. I've actually started on my like on my my own YouTube videos. If I play at night, I actually lose up the brightness and the contrast across the board. Yeah. Um, but then I have to. Of course, that turns me into this like glowing angel uh like in my face on the screen and so then i have to tamp that down and i've made i've made the editing really comp really complicated for myself <laughs> so <laughs> uh so uh paroxicus uh jokingly uh wants to know when we're getting a liverpool based map uh in state of i Georgia. literally just read that as you said that yeah oh that'd be I amazing mean, i'd love that 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 would sound fantastic you know <laughs> when's the seattle map like, I, don't know. I mean these are all sort of Outskirt, like, like not, uh, these are all kind of Washington maps. I mean, these maps are largely inspired mm. by rural Washington, so they're not really Seattle maps. I mean, dense, dense, you know, uh, urban settings have always been kind of a challenge for the stuff for the style of gameplay that we're doing. It's 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 a lot harder, um, and so we've been avoiding that sort of thing. However, I mean, there are there are some great representations of Seattle in 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 like other open world games, other zombie games. Uh, the Last of Us Two has got some. I almost was able to trace my my commute to work in The Last of Us Two, which was amazing. Um, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Are we ready? Okay, okay, check this out. Look at what Joe's <gasps> gonna do. Okay. He's got a rucksack, but got he's 
rucksack oh. on my back even. But I'm not at home. <gasps> There's three options on this menu. What? So we're going to open the outpost. We're going to... No? No. Okay. We're going to open the outpost and go in this... No. Deposit <laughs> rucksack. Oh no, I have too many of those things. Am I sure that I want to? Yes. And look at that. His rucksack yes! is gone. He took an outpost. And now... He... I'm cleaning the stuff. toilets. So, so <laughs> another thing I would love to see is... Let's say you want a new attachment on your gun, um, and there, but you don't have. Let's pretend that you don't have a pile of like a thousand of every type of attachment, um, yeah. and what let's are we uh, let's go see if you can strip an attachment off a gun that's in your supply locker. Since you're at a supply locker anyway. Oh, this is gonna destroy all of my OCD. I know. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna make. I'm making your life worse, Joe. Like okay. it's your collection. My, it's my mission in life. Okay. So look at that. He's got an advanced suppressor on that sucker. And then right down there in the in the in the bitty in the bits down below on the bottom of the screen. It says RT detach, detach mod. mod. Now you don't have to actually do it if you really would rather keep all of your mods where they are. <gasps> but you did it. Okay, it's so, not it. so now it's gone into the supply it didn't go into your inventory, it went into the supply locker, but now you've got a free floating suppressor or whatever you had on that gun in the supply locker. Of course you probably again already had nine hundred of them, so um, I'm I'm Somewhere. doubting you would notice. But <laughs> But those stack now, so I would notice. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Did I forget? Did they used to not stack? They used to not stack. Yeah. What was wrong with us? Why did we ever have it that way? That's crazy. <laughs> uh, because you never expected people to do what I have done. Which is collect a <laughs> hundred of every gun in the game? <laughs> right. Uh, what did you have? Here's a problem, guy? Joe. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I don't have so a problem. You still have to have it equipped in order to attach a suppressor to it. Oh, no, I guess you don't. You actually you know you nope, could have done it in the inventory, huh? Yeah, never mind. I forgot. That, that was an update we made a while ago. Totally forgot that, it, that that existed. And there you go. I love how long that took to scroll to the end of that list. That was insane. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the the whole point of it was, like, I wanted to be able to collect everything. <laughs> and, and, yeah. I, and I feel like in a survival game when I, I, I don't know uh, have we talked about most of the patch notes uh, I think so yeah feel free to, to start we've got there's so, a few like, minor bug fixes one of the, one of the things that the... I think is really important in a, in a game especially mm -hmm. in like in the modern gaming context where you have like streamers who like to do things uh, and show off for their community and be like yeah I know all the answers and yada 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 and look at all this cool stuff that I collected or look at this really exclusive thing that you only get after 5,000 hours of playing um, is peacocking. It's super important. Right, yeah. It's super important in any game that you do. Like, um, you know, people will pay good money, good mo types of good money, just to be able to say, like, oh, look at these beautiful golden wings that nobody else can get. And they're like, well, but I didn't want to pay the $10. Um, but then there are also other types of peacocking where you've kind of, like, attached it to, um, like, what, what the player has actually done in the game. Uh, you know, and... and you know, we do a little bit of that with our bounty system, but a lot of it is just done with like I've looted this stuff ten thousand times, and finally one of those times I found a MGL thirty-two. You know, and it's oh look at this beautiful thing, and I'm gonna go out and blow it up, um, blow up a bunch of stuff with it. Um, and so, you know, for me, it's more like I want to be able to showcase weapons whenever whenever necessary and so like if somebody wants to see an m203 standalone or the echo s5 gas launcher i know that i've got that in my in my uh in my supply locker or if they want to see or if they want to yeah. see the r12 import versus the trusty r12 versus <laughs> the devgru x12 which is just an r12 that has a much higher capacity and is fully auto you know those kinds of things just all the different variations of the guns and, and making sure that like I can showcase what State of Decay 2 can really do, you know, in terms of like end game content. And so, Yeah, it's like it's like it's one of them aspects, isn't it, from like MMOs back in the day when you'd see someone walk past with some mount that you've never seen before and it's like, what the hell is that? Yeah, yeah. Um but you've got it all. Yeah, prepared. Like, the, like the golden like the golden uh the Golden Drake when Wrath of the Lich King was alive. I remember. I was that. gonna say Ashbringer, but yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not. No, the, the way old. I'm way old. 
it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that it was it was so good. All of those all of those collectibles, right? And and so the more collectibles you have in the game, um, you know, the more people will want to show off the really special stuff they've got, or they want to. And I, and I think that's one of the things we've kind of missed out on. I was kind of joking before the show. is like, well, if I just had a collection screen, I wouldn't need this many guns in my supply locker. But that's also true. Like, if I had just a collection screen, you know, where I could just yeah. go and be like, I want this one again. I want that one back. Um, as opposed to, like, I've got 300 guns in my supply locker. <laughs> yeah, and it's tough because, like, on one hand, you know, we build the mechanics around you know, what we expect to be uh, the sort of uh, early players to to want, which is a survival game where it's like each item is real, it can be lost, it can be destroyed, you know, that sort of thing. But, but once you, like, have been playing for a certain amount of time with a particular community, you've built them up so much that they've just got infinite everything, that, that importance of each individual item being its own thing and being, you know, destructible and losable, and that's, it starts to matter a lot less because you've got so much of it, and that's when I think something like a collection screen, screen where you can just have access to everything you've ever gotten starts to feel much more reasonable, right? But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so it's, it's a complicated thing trying to, like, solve problems like that for, for multiple players. Yeah, and it's, it's not an easy, it's not like it's an, an easy fix, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and you have to make choices when you're when you're scoping a game so that you can actually ship. Um, and so, you know, that's certainly low on the low on the priority scale when it comes to like things that need to happen at launch, versus like, you know, th- maybe this is something we could add on in update forty nine. You know, <laughs> right? You never know. <laughs> so I tried to pick a big enough number where I wasn't being like, okay, we're <laughs> yeah. to this is when you do it. confirmed. Um, so, uh, so speaking of updates, though, speaking of future updates, so update 36 is not actually the only update we're here to talk about. Uh, there's also going to be an update to the PTR <clears throat> coming down the pipe. So, Ian, do you want to kick us off? Tell us a little bit about what you got planned. Yeah. So, um, uh, I mean, uh, I think we're planning on it. Uh, so far, so good at least. Um, but we're hoping to launch the PTR next week, and there's a bunch of changes and reworks around um, that are going to be coming in there. Um, particularly something that myself and a few others at Wisher have been working on is a rework and like readjustment and rescaling to how zombies spawn in the world. So um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of things that we've, we're, we're going to be changing in regards to this. Um, so obviously like, you know, the decisions and where and when a zombie is spawned and the rules behind that. Uh, and like the algorithms, everything that decides like this is an appropriate place to spawn a zombie. Um, we've made like drastic changes to some of that stuff, so it, it it's going to feel a bit more. Um, while we respect the limitations of the hardware and everything like that, um, it's going to feel, or we hope that it'll feel um, like there are more zombies in the world. Um, there might be a few more as well. Like um, there's there's a whole bunch of changes around this. Um, and it's gonna be it's gonna be an ongoing thing um, for some time, like not too long, obviously. But um, such a fundamental system like the zombie spawning of the game, it's like so foundational to the experience. Um, we just want to make sure that we are preserving the expectations that have already been set, whilst also you know con- continuing to improve uh, the experience uh, from these changes. Um, so yeah, um, so if, we should if- be expecting that. So Sorry? If, if so, if a player uh, you know goes into the PTR, which by the way I should have mentioned in case someone doesn't know, the PTR is the public test realm. It's our sort of branch of the game you can get on Steam where you can try out stuff that is not officially in the game yet, stuff that the devs are trying out. Um, if somebody is going to go in there and play it, like I'm curious, like, like what what kind of mindset do you want them to have going in? Or is there a certain way you want them to think, a certain way you want them to explore the <laughs> game that would generate the kind of feedback that you're looking for? Yeah, I think so. I think I mean obviously it's always nice to hear um, like a comparison from your usual experience, like just so we know, like, okay, um, we know that this is kind of hitting the same notes of like what they would expect, but um, whilst we've still got our changes and differences in there. Um, so yeah, it's like, it, it's um, almost like we're asking for, did everything feel fairer? Like we, 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 we've done a lot of work as well around like making sure that zombies don't spawn where you wouldn't expect them. Um, and you know, you're, when you kill a zombie, it should feel like there's one less zombie in the world. 
so it has like an impact on like the local population um, where you're killing them zombies. Um, so expectations around that, like you, you know, you leave this area after going on the biggest uh, rampage, zombie rampage that you could. You come back five minutes later. Is it kind of still at that reduced, you know, population that you left it in? Uh, maybe it's like starting to slowly ramp back up, like as zombies are moving back in. Um, yeah, just it's it's gonna be a lot around. Does this fit within the simulation that you would expect? Um, does this like do these changes feel like it's improved your experience? Um, are there any other like uh, like sort of negative experiences that you that you've been trying to sort of fix and, and avoid that you want players to keep an eye out for? You already mentioned zombies appearing in places where it feels unreasonable that the zombie would have been. You've talked about you know like I feel like I've cleaned out this area, but now there's just zombies there like I never did anything. Those are two things you're trying to solve. Are there any other like bad player experiences that that you're trying to improve on? Yeah. So um, uh, there's a few again. Um, so one of the one of the main things as well is. Um, you know, when a player crash searches, and it, it's like, again, they've just like been on a little rampage, they've killed everything, and you, you perform a crash search, um, which is when you know you're you're fast searching through a container, and then a noise is like kind of emitted from like clumsy hands. Um, there was a there was a like common consensus that it was like it it, fe it felt cheap that we were kind of just spawning a zombie in anyway and like sending it to the player's location, so we're now kind of having more of a reliance on the simulation and like what is there in the world. Um, and then again, uh, more things around uh, like when a screamer um, gets its gets its scream off and you know, again, we're relying more on like the ambience zombies that are already there in the world. Um, and then potentially like a, at some point we're going to look at like uh, building out that call and actually like draining the population or like the density of zombies um, within the area that went you know within sight or uh, active in the world at the time so um yeah I think there's gonna be so much around some some of this um, there's, there's, there's gonna be more I, I will check my notes just to make yeah. sure because so there is one, so much around this. One, one negative experience that I know people have had sometimes is just the feeling of there's literally nowhere that doesn't have at least one zombie in it. So it's like players are trying to drive away from a bad situation, but everywhere they go, there's just more zombies and there's nowhere where they can stop and get a breather. Um, is, 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 is there been any thought put into, like, you know, spikier spawning where it's like there's lots of intense zombies here, but a lot fewer over here? Um, I'm throwing that at you out of the blue, and so it's totally cool if you don't have an answer. No, yeah, um, there's that. Yeah, that is one of the things that we've uh, been making more considerations of. I think there was already like efforts around that from the previous spawning changes, but um, we're, uh, our plan for that is like we're building on this and make sure it's more noticeable. Um, again, just to meet the player expectation and like make the worlds feel a bit, you know, the distribution of the zombies like should feel like it's it's dangerous going into a town because it's like it's. This is where everyone lived. Like this is this, the main hub of the map, um, compared to you know a ranch in the middle of uh, like the countryside kind of thing. Um, so yeah, there's definitely like considerations around that that we're hoping to um, make feel a bit more noticeable to other uh, players. So uh, so okay. So aside from the spawning changes, what else is going in there? Well, apart from the zombie spawning stuff, the next thing uh, we'll be going inside the PTR is the cobalt's improvement. So uh, I guess this is why I ramble off for like five minutes or so. Yeah, please. Go but yeah, <laughs> okay. So ever since we released cobalt's, we got a lot of feedback from the players and we decided to dedicate some time to improve the cobalt system. Uh, the first thing was um, the previous cobalt settings, it kind of felt like it was hidden away, like uh, inside the gameplay settings. This has now been moved over to the cobalt journal to make it more accessible to the players. And when you open up the cobalt settings, the first thing that players would notice is that they're not automatically opted into cobalt, but they can enable it themselves. So that uh, because we want to get the idea that we want players to opt into cobalt and challenge themselves rather than the challenge coming to them and they have no way out type of situation. But for those players who opt into cobalt, we have gone with an approach to give players more control with one, like how they want their community call balls to behave. Basically making call balls customizable to the player. Uh, we've implemented four different sliders 
I remember reading a post about a slider, like a, a player wanted a slider to, to determine the cobalt's settings. And uh, I can say, yes, we've answered your prayers and we've given you four sliders instead of one slider now. So, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first slider you would, you would see would be the frequency slider. This will kind of detect how, how fast you want your cobalt's occurring. So, as you can have three cobalt's active at a time, you can choose if you want your cobalt to be more spaced out so that you can have more freedom to do all the stuff or if you basically want all three active cobalts at all times which is gonna be fantastic <laughs> uh, that's kind of like we're all getting a little distracted on. by the fact that uh ferals are trying to murder joe <laughs> yeah <laughs> but please, 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 please say, like this just makes the video more fun to watch <laughs> <laughs> You got it's it's like it's like um, there was a question earlier about ways to make it more difficult for yourself. So yeah, some of this as yeah. well will help you do that uh, for the for these the lethal players out there. Yeah, and the second slider that will be available to the players in the PTR would be the balance slider. This would determine what type of cobalt you want active in your community. So this can range from only having positive cobalt to a mix of both, which is already by default, to only negative cobalt. So those players who dislike having positive call balls in their lethal runs, we hear you. So uh, yeah, this will make it a lot harder and a lot easier depending as to what settings you actually choose. And the last two sliders uh, will be the positive... Uh, oh, I think I broke oh, no. it. <laughs> oh no. Crash. Too many zombies. Well, hey, let's up. just uh, let's just keep talking to Steve. <laughs> okay, let's keep on rambling on. It's no all good. Um, so yeah, the last two sliders that players will have access to will be the positive and the negative sliders, impact sliders, and adjusting the sliders will increase the duration, the radius, and the effects of the call balls. So, for example, for the positive uh, slider, you can have um, the call ball soft skins. And if you get the vulnerability to melee hits, I believe, uh, yeah, which makes them easier to kill and, you know, you have more chances to knock them down. If you adjust the positive slider, it will increase their vulnerability, making them much, much easier to kill. So this can be really helpful for those players who want to try, like, you know, lethal runs and want to have the positive sliders and they just want to have, like, an easier time with lethal, then, yeah, that's for you. So, so that's, and, uh, not just, that's not just raising the probability of, of good curveballs happening, it's also raising the intensity of the good curveballs? Yes, it also raises the intensity of the good curveballs, but that's if the player wants just the good curveballs. They can also have it just be just the negative curveballs, where it increases the intensity of the negative curveballs. So um, I feel whenever I talk about the negative curveballs, I have to talk about the king of the negative curveballs. Which is always the black heart because yeah i mean you've not experienced it yet so you you don't know the pain <laughs> but uh i only know the intimidation. A lot of players. <laughs> but yeah a lot of players have experienced you know the black heart and i also remember seeing a post saying that uh, we have left the nerf for black heart for like dread at the very least and uh they, we should have left it for later on and maybe nightmare and then uh, we can now say that well you can adjust that negative slider by yourselves so if you feel you want to have a major outburst of you know black heart going in on you where the effects are increased you're going to be taking more damage and killing it is going to be intensely hard or harder so uh yeah that is all down to the player and of course all of this will be available in the ptr and the values of the effects are not going to be finalized we will adjust the values based on the player's feedback. So yeah, that's why we kind of wanted to encourage the players to test out the PTR server, which will be coming out at some point next week, I believe. Yeah. I don't have the proper dates on me. And uh, yeah, give us your feedback. We'll listen to you and we will adjust everything before we do send it out live. So yeah, keep your, keep an eye out for our, so, you know, follow us on social media. We will definitely announce when there is a new build of the PTR available. So anybody who has the game on Steam and wants to download, uh, you know, you want to like basically switch to that branch and play in there, you can try out this stuff and give feedback uh, before it goes out to everybody else. You can be part, sort of part of the solution, which, uh, which can be a lot of fun. Um, 
Telly Kastanopoulos wants to know uh, for new so so just to, to clarify for new players a brand new player comes into the game they don't even know what curveballs are what is their experience with curveballs and the version that you got in the PTR? Uh, with the version that we have in the PTR, well, the players will be opted out of curveballs because we didn't really like the idea of having players, you know, getting a blackout straight away and it's like, whoa, what's happening? <laughs> so, yeah, it kind of felt too punishing to just let players be, well, opt in without them, like, actually wanting to. So, yeah, we've kind of changed that now that players can choose to opt in, but they will be automatically opted out of it unless if they want to. Awesome. That's a, another thing as well. Like there will be a, like a default experience for those who don't want to customize anything around curveballs. Yeah. yeah, these sliders are just going to be like you want a bit more or like change the experience ever so Quite slightly. Intense. It's completely optional. Yeah. Well, we are starting to get towards the end of our time. There was one question that was asked very early on uh, by Aaron Walsh, and I just wanted this is this is a little bit more of a frivolous question, but he says, "Do you listen to music while playing this game?" And also, you can answer if you play listen to music while developing this game, um, or are you too <laughs> careful to listen to anything distracting while you're being hunted? Uh, well, I was listening to music until a pack of ferals kind of humbled me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Now, every time I'm, I'm on edge, I have to hear the sound or else I, I know something bad might happen. <laughs> yeah, I've got games where I can listen to things, listen to podcasts or something while I'm playing, but they're like games where I feel, you know, like I've got a lot to lose. Like when I'm playing Project Zomboid, I have to turn everything off because this yeah. Yeah. is distraction. I'm going to lose just hours and hours and hours of play. <laughs> yes. What, so, uh, what, what, what kind of music did you listen to before you were intimidated out of it, Steve? Oh, well, I'm more of an EDM guy, so, you know, I was always, like, jamming to myself, you know, always vibing. <laughs> and then I just heard, you know, a pack of pharaohs just come towards me, and I was like, oh, okay, it's just one. Oh, no, it's another one. Oh, no, it's a third one. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is not how I want this to happen. So, yeah, ever since then, I was like, never again. <laughs> <laughs> you what you what you used to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, typically for me, when I'm playing a game, I don't tend to listen to anything else other than the game's audio, because I just get... Uh, I like to just be so immersed and like know that like outworld distractions bore like to reply that to when I'm working. Um, I have a song that I like to listen to on repeat as loud as possible when I it's like you're in that mode where it's like we just need to get everything done like the things need to get done like by this time right like and you're in an urgency and that is um that song is kickstart my heart by the Motley Crew. Uh, I don't know what it is about it but I just it's the put it motorcycle on sounds, Ian. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's the urgency to do to go. It is. Yes. Uh, I love it. I I have loved that song. Uh, ever since Gran Turismo. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I discovered it as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe it was too, but I don't. I can't say for certain. It, it is funny yeah. how much how much of an influence video games have on sort of musical culture and people's musical repertoires. Like uh, I don't like my kids, for instance. They know this smattering of '70s rock anthems, even though they were all born in the 2000s. <laughs> the reason is they played rock band as children, and there was oh, just yeah. this particular set of like '70s and '80s rock songs that were that were just really popular in rock band. And so my kids learned those and nothing else from the decade. <laughs> But they have those in common with their friends because their friends also played rock band uh, when they were little, and so it's like, so rock band kind of determined like what the new generation of of listeners what they think of as being the music of the seventies and eighties. It was rock band that decided what they think of that, uh, which is just fascinating. I mean, it's great. They're, it's a curated list. They think that our music was way cooler uh, from our childhood than it actually was um, <laughs> because they they only hear the good stuff. No, no, no. It was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it definitely was. Um, so uh, to answer the question myself, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we have an open office here. And so there are some times when you, when you need to sort of just shut out all the distractions. And so I usually have to listen to something that like, sort of fills all of the audio channels in my brain, but without distracting me with things like lyrics. Because if I'm listening to lyrics, I can't write anything. Um, and so if I'm like, if I'm having to focus on writing and I'm in a space that's very distracting, I usually put on some Carpenter Brute. Uh, because it's like this, you know, just driving heavy electronic thing, but no lyrics, and and, and, and it's so it, 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 it it's like noise, but in a good way. Um, it's like it's like white noise turned up to eleven. I think it's, it's sort of what it is for me. So, so that's 
so there's the answer to your question, Aaron Walsh. Uh, he, I think he's been waiting like 50 minutes for us to answer that. So <laughs> I, I hope he's still in the chat. Well, and I also think that you know it, 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 it often depends on the mood that I'm in. Like there are a lot of times where it's like it's a Britney Spears, Taylor Swift kind of day. Because you <laughs> yeah. just need to get things done, but you don't want to be all angry about it. You know, <laughs> you just want to get stuff done. <laughs> Uh, so Aaron Walsh was in the chat, so he did get to hear the answer to the question. And there's another, actually, so Aerie Twitch has also been asking a question uh, that I want to make sure we get to before we wrap up, uh, which is, is there any way to know how long a curveball is going to last? Because uh, Aerie Twitch sometimes really wants to take advantage of a curveball, of, of, of an interesting curveball, but isn't sure how much time she has before that curveball is going to go away. Is, is there any way to know, or, or is that something that, that, that isn't really possible for players? Um, currently, there isn't a way for players to know the time the duration for certain kobolds. Uh, but we do have a system that could implement it, so it definitely can be something that can be done for okay. players. So maybe take that as a suggestion, as something in the suggestion box, and see, <laughs> see if it Yeah, works. definitely, yeah. Um, and similarly, like one of our most classic suggestions, uh, Comsvolt uh, uh, raised it, was just being able to know uh, time of day. Because right now, obviously, it's been night for most of this episode. Uh, it's very, very dark. I mean, even though we're in Drucker, which is one of the brighter maps at night, it's still very, very dark. And having a sense of how long that darkness is gonna last is something that would be great. And honestly, like we've been giving positive feedback to that to that message for a long time without ever actually doing it. Uh, so I'm also not gonna obligate you to do it because, you know, we spent four years not doing it. Um, <laughs> but, but I wanted to bring up, because the audience brings it up all the time, how much they would love to have some kind of clock, something just saying, Please let us know when the sun will rise. We're dying here in this uh, in this in this pit of hell that you put us into. But, but yeah, but Jeffrey, that's look that's one the of the stars. things I think. <laughs> oh, go, go ahead. Let's, let's, let's yeah, it's peaceful. Um, it's one of them things that I think has come up in the past. You're on a like. Um, We've had like discussions and talks about what to tackle potentially for like quality of life improvements, like what this whole update was about. Okay. Um, but yeah, like based on that, it's like it's something that we could again just like take a relook at at some point and just you know oh we've got time for this now i guess uh yeah it's but yeah we, it's I, I agree it would be action. nice trying to figure out what you have time to do right because you know because because all of the things that we want to do and this is the problem the thing that kept us from doing it for years is just we always had a hundred things that we wanted to do and we could only ship like five at a time and so everything is a trade-off you know and and so when we're looking at like yeah. there's so many good ideas and some of them just by pure luck just ended up never thematically lining up with something we were doing or just we never had the resources in the right place because they were always needed for something else and it's not like we were doing nothing we were doing other things with those resources <laughs> that mattered you know but just yeah it, it could it could be tough because there's just so many things that did I just see a zombie walk off without its head? Yeah, it's uh, it's the headless zombie curveball. Oh, yep. sweet! This is a good. This is gonna be a good <laughs> thing to end on. A nice weirdo curveball. It's gonna die now. I I, I love that curveball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just so funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. you know, chickens and whatnot. Well, um, I think we might need to leave Joe on a cliffhanger about whether he's going to survive being uh, Ichabod Crane over here, uh, because we're going to have to wrap this up. So, um, C, Ian, thank you so much for coming here being our guest, filling everybody in. Um, any last words you want to leave for the audience, Steve? Uh, oh, God, the pressure is on. Um, <laughs> well, I'd ever say keep on giving us some feedbacks, because we're going to be working on a lot of stuff, and we do listen to everything that you guys do say. So, yes, please keep on giving us the feedbacks, and we will try our best to implement as much as possible to keep Steel Decay 2 alive. So, yes. Thank awesome. you. And, uh, Ian, anything to say? Uh, more of the, pretty much the same, really, and just, like, thank you so much for all the, like, positive messages, and, you know, it's, it's really affecting the team. Everyone really loves it. Like, it's so heartwarming, and it's always great to see uh, your work be appreciated, so thank you. Um, and yeah, for the, the PTR that we're planning soon, just um, we'll be more active in the Discord and it would just be really great to get some conversations and feedback uh, focused around that. So helpful. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you both for coming on. Uh, Joe, I, I assume your character did in fact survive uh, after we cut away? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. You want to say goodbye to the audience before we get out of here? I, I do. Uh, I just want to I just want to say thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, you know, those of you across the pond, thank you for uh, for continuing your work on this game that we all love. Um, 
you know, we show up occasionally, uh, but y'all are out there doing doing the really good work uh, that's left on State of K2. So, uh, you know, thank you for m making this even more possible for us to be able to, you know, have a little credit for what you're doing. Um, but also, you know, to the to the folks out there who keep us all going, you know, thank you to the fans. Um, and don't forget that it's time for the plunder pack. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so if you're watching this later on on YouTube, uh, go down to the doobly-doo, check out our, our links to social media. If you follow us there, you will find out when the new uh, PTR update comes in. You can participate in the next round of improvements for the game, so please go and get involved in that if you play the game on Steam. That'll be good. Joe is right. Uh, well, there is a new bounty pack out, the plunder pack. You can go grab your pirate gear. Uh, you can grab that purple car that he's been driving around the entire episode. Uh, and with that... I think we're going to get out of here. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Wushu friends. And uh, thank you, audience. And now we've got... Yes. Thank you. Thank got you very it. much. Now we've got our awkward sign-off, which just gets even more awkward every time. Yep. Keep talking, Joe. If you're watching on YouTube, of course, you can click in some links and make this stop.